how do you relate reduction potentials to free energy changes? Well, we have a simple formula here, or relatively simple formula. Delta G, the free energy change, is equal to minus L E0 of this process, which is called E cell. That simplifies here, so N is the number of electrons involved. E is the charge on the electron, and L is Avogadro's number. Now, there is another constant in chemistry, Faraday's constant, and Faraday's constant is obtained by multiplying the charge on an electron, that's about minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, by Avogadro's number, which I hope we all know is of 6.02 times 10 to the 24. Those are both very big and very small numbers. You multiply them together, you actually get a number that is relatively manageable, 96,500. And that is Faraday's constant. So we have Faraday's constant here, 96,485 to be precise. So this is a simplified version substituting in for L and E in here. Now, note this minus sign here. What that means, essentially, is in order for us to have a negative free energy change and for a process to, be, to occur spontaneously, the value here of E0, or E cell, has to be positive. So this value needs to be positive in order for us to end up with a negative value of delta G. Now, how do you calculate this value of E0 for the cell? Well, it is, and this is where it gets just a teensy bit confusing, potentially, it is the reduction potential for the species that is being reduced, minus the reduction potential, and I can't stress that enough, minus the reduction potential for the species that is being oxidized. Okay, so we look for the reduction potential, but we need to recognize the species is actually being oxidized in this process. So, we have the reduction potential minus the reduction potential of the species that is being oxidized. And if that value comes out to be positive, then the reaction will be spontaneous in that direction. So let's do that calculation for the one that we have on the board here. So let's look at this, let's address this as though it were running from left to right. If the value we get when it's running from left to right is positive, then that means the reaction would indeed run from left to right. If the value that we get by calculating it from left to right is negative, that means it wouldn't be spontaneous, spontaneous in that direction. It must be running from right to left. So let's do it. Which one of these species is being reduced? Is it zinc or aluminium? The zinc is being reduced. So the reduction potential for zinc is this one here. So E0 for our cell is equal to minus 0.76. Now, which species then is being oxidized as we look at that from left to right? So it's aluminium. And we want the reduction potential for the species that's being oxidized. So the reduction potential for aluminium here is minus 1.66. So remember, our expression is minus minus 1.66 volts. So if you have two minuses, it makes... It makes a plus, plus 0.9 volts. So actually, so what we have here is a value of plus 0.9 volts. So the value is positive. So what does that mean for the way that this reaction will actually run? It will run from left to right. This reaction is favorable in a left to right direction. Now... This is a little bit of mathematics for you. Actually, you didn't have to do this in order to predict which direction this reaction would run. There is a simpler way of addressing these questions. And that essentially is the one that you get if you use what's known as the clockwise rule. Now, the clockwise rule arises if we list, as I've done here, our reduction potentials from the highest value of reduction potential down to the lowest value of reduction potential. And it's essential that you list them in decreasing order of reduction potential. So 
take all of the reduction potentials you're interested in and list them in decreasing order of reduction potential. The two in particular we're interested in here are these two here. The clockwise rule states that any pair of redox couples that you can follow in a clockwise direction when you've ordered them in terms of decreasing reduction potential, that will be the spontaneous direction. That will be the spontaneous direction for our chemistry to occur in. So if we look at this pair here, it does indeed go in a clockwise direction. Zinc 2 going to zinc metal, aluminium metal going to aluminium 3 plus. This is beneath this one, so this occurs in a clockwise direction and so follows the clockwise rule. 